Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to the realest podcast in the dunya, the three Muslims. We're joined here once again with brother Musa Adnan, who just dipped for probably internet reasons. Assalamu alaikum. Anha, what's going on, bro? Alhamdulillah. But the Musa was good, bro. I thought you were going to dip like one minute in. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, everything's good. Jazakallah khairan for having me on again, guys. May Allah bless you. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. For a lot of people that aren't aware, we already had one episode with you, mashallah. It was just me and Rami. Brother Anhal couldn't make it that day. So it's only right that this time Anhal, couldn't, uh, Anhal made it, but Rami couldn't make it. So inshallah, <laughs> next time, bro, I got a dip. So it's only going to be y'all three. But aside from that, bro, what's going on in the UK? Alhamdulillah, things are good in the UK. Uh, we just done uh, the khutbah a few a few hours ago. So mm. I'm just here in uh, one of the centers we have here, alhamdulillah. And yeah, man, it's all chilled. Alhamdulillah, we're taking it easy. What was the khutbah about? Uh, I've done the khutbah on change. So uh, a lot of people, they have the mentality that, um, you know, I'm an adult now. I can't change. This is just how I am. And I basically spoke mm. about change from an Islamic perspective that, no, you can change. And that's basically a false idea that's being spread by people. Mm. But yeah, man. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Bro, random question, but what are, like, give me, like, one or a couple of, like, the, the top most influential speakers for you in the da'wah, those that have helped you. And I know, like, we want to give a preface disclaimer right now. Anyone you don't mention, it doesn't mean that they didn't help you. It's just particularly noteworthy individuals that come to mind right now. In the da'wah. Uh, for me personally... Aside, aside from the three Muslims, obviously, bro. <laughs> for me personally, um, online... Um, I really benefit from um, there's a sheikh his name is his name is Sheikh Uthman Al Khamis. Okay. His stuff is very good, but his stuff is in Arabic. But for me, that's my favorite person online. If I was to give one person online whose stuff I really benefit from, his stuff is amazing. If you understand Arabic, his stuff is really really good. In the English speaking language, one sheikh that I really like, um, his talks have really benefited me in the past, is Sheikh Abu Osama Al Dhahabi. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. He's he's American actually. He's American mm -hmm. originally. Um, he give, he gives a lot of talks here in the UK, and especially online, you can find a lot of his stuff online. A very very good man. Very very good. He's a very passionate speaker. He's a very good speaker, and um, I, I I really like his his stuff as well. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless them and continue to preserve them. I mean. So the topic of today, everyone's already seeing the, the topic. It's not clickbait. This is genuinely today's episode. It's going to be on just isms, bro. Just different ways of life, different ideologies today that Muslims are, are at a fork in the road with sometimes with their identity thinking, should I take from this? Is there benefit from this? Should I take from that? So my first question to you is when it comes to anything such as red pill, feminism, anything that dictates gender dynamics according to its own, I guess, way of life or ideology, when did you first start coming across these things, such as red pill and etc.? Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The first time I came across red pill was within the last year or so, to be honest with you. And I think that's when, I mean, for me personally, that's where I've seen it really blow up online. A lot of people talking about it. A lot of controversy, okay? I think you guys were involved in some of that or something, right? Uh, but like a lot of controversy uh, around it. That's red pill. I heard about feminism a long time before Red Pill, years ago, maybe. Like, I think feminism has been around for quite a while. I don't know if Red Pill has, but um, I know feminism has been around for quite a long time. Mm, okay. Yeah. And what was your... I know I know exactly what you're talking about. About a year ago, there were a couple of brothers that we know that were making videos about Red Pill. Should Muslims follow Red Pill? There were some mm -hmm. debates. So what was your initial impression about Red Pill as a Muslim man? Initially... I'll be honest, initially, some of the stuff that was being mentioned, I thought, okay, like, I agree with this stuff, you know. Um, initially, some of the stuff that was being mentioned, I thought to myself, some of this stuff does seem to be in line with, with Islam. That Those were my initial thoughts. Um, but I've, I'm always skeptical, man, of this type of stuff that's coming up because... Any ideology, any any like philosophy that is outside of Islam, 
you know, there's going to be some dodgy stuff, man. Like, there's going to be something that comes in where, you know, um, it's, 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 it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a bit problematic. Like, this is from my experience. Like, for example, at one point, I was really into Stoicism, you know, Stoic philosophy. And I was like, man, this stuff is amazing. Like, you got some of the Ryan Holiday books. Um, I bought them, read them. And I'm like, man, these, this stuff is really good. Like, The Obstacle is the Way is one of the books I read. And I was like, man, this is a crazy book. But then you start seeing certain things creeping in. Mm. And one thing I noticed with Stoicism, for example, is the constant mention of Marcus Aurelius, right? The, the Roman emperor. So, and he's like one of the founding fathers, they say, of Stoicism and whatnot, or like one of the main you know, marjits, if you want to call it, like people who return back to him for it and whatever, and his book, Meditations. So I thought, okay, let me buy his book, Meditations. I bought that, and that's some next level stuff. I remember, like, the first few pages I'm reading, it's got some shirki stuff in there, kufri stuff, like some next level things, right, that mm. you as a Muslim, you don't want to read, okay? Um, and I kind of felt like, okay, I was hooked in by these flashy books and really really nice nicely presented you know ideas but then when i'm hooked in i'm being given some of this stuff that i didn't ask for and mm. I think that's how a lot of it is yeah yeah it's one of the things in um in stoicism is that if you are if you are sick or like let's say you can't fight you can't really do anything you're not of use then it's better to just end your life. Hmm. Like to just straight up just see you, see your way out. Yeah. So and, and that's yeah, that's not something that clicks with Islam. Yeah, yeah. Islam, one of the maqasid, one of the you know, one of the things that the Sharia is here for, one of the things that Islam is here for is preserving life. It's actually the opposite of that. It's preserving life. Hmm. Right? So yeah, I mean, and we'll get more into this stuff, obviously. But yeah, man, that's that's crazy. Mm. SubhanAllah, bro. I can relate with you on so many levels. When I first came across Red Pill, Stoicism, a lot of these ideologies, it initially gets you in. Because we had one of the brothers, uh, his name's Hamza, on the channel. And what he mentioned on the channel was, he said that the Red Pill only seems jaw-dropping to us because we lived in such a blue pill world. You know, like mm. we lived in such a world where... Uh, gender relations and intersexual dynamics was so backwards that yeah. if there's a glimpse of truth, even if it's one percent in red pill, it just seems so like eye opening to us. But yeah. when in reality, it's it's far from it. That's the thing. So, what helped you discern that RP might not be hundred percent right? And there's a lot of elements that are not in line with reality whatsoever, especially Islam for you. First of all, as Muslims, one of the things that we need to understand is, and and this is. When, when we hear these things, these are not cliche statements. Islam is perfect. What Islam is giving you is perfect. And when you insinuate and you infer that I need something from this ideology and I need something from that ideology, you are inferring, without, without explicitly saying it, you're inferring Islam lacks this. Or mm -hmm. I could get this. Because here's the thing. If, if, you, if you work for a company, and the company is giving you every single thing that you need. They're providing you a home, a car. They're giving you a very good salary. They're giving you everything that you need. Anything that you ask for, they're giving it to you. And you acknowledge. Yeah, you guys are giving me everything. You guys have given me everything that I need. And then, after saying that, you say, but I'm going to go check this company over there because, you know. And then someone says to you, why, why are you going over there for? Why, why, why are you doing that for? And you say, oh, well, I just feel like, you know, I could benefit from this as well. People mm. are going to look at you strange. People are going to look at you strange. So similarly, Islam, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has completed Islam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was perfect in his character. Any positive characteristic that there is, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the closest to that characteristic. And you see this when you read his life. And any negative characteristic that there is, he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the furthest away from that characteristic. So, so personally, when I see um, movements like red pill, etc., yeah, it's true. I mean, you might find something in there that agrees with Islam, and mm. you might find something in Hinduism that agrees with Islam, and you might find something in Christianity that agrees with Islam. You might find 
you might you may find someone who is a pedophile saying something you know one statement comes out of his mouth where you're like yeah okay that makes sense right but does that mean now we take on the ideology does that mean that we take mm-hmm. on you know these ideologies that in reality each each ideology has a purpose mm-hmm. each in has a purpose so you have to ask yourself the question what is the the gaya what is the end goal of this ideology the end goal of islam what is the end goal of islam what what do i want to get out of islam islam it it fixes your current life it gives you good in this dunya and the akhirah the end goal of islam is a person becoming closer to allah a person becoming a muttaqi a person eventually entering jannah a person living the best way that they can on this earth and going into the best place that they can in the afterlife mm. that uh, some things that a person may argue are the end goals of Islam what's the end goal of red pill for me to sleep around what's the end goal of red pill for me to be seen by women in a certain way what's the end goal of red pill for, for, for okay um the, the you know the the promotion of high value man and this is the thing you know m- money right exactly and this is the issue this is the issue brothers when you talk about ideologies whether it be red pill feminism etc what are these ideologies based on okay as muslims the way that we look at a man and we give value to a man we the way we give value to a human being subhanallah is very different it's it's inherently fundamentally different from the way others give value to things so for example in 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 outside society what things are valued if you have money you have money you have a nice woman you have wealth you have cars you have all of these things you have social status yes these are, these are things that are valued outside but from an islamic shari'i perspective to allah whose opinion matters in akramakum and allahi atqakum explicit indeed you know the most noble of you the ones who have you know the essentially who who is the best of us the most noble of you are those who are atqakum you are those who are the most conscious of Allah because from an Islamic perspective becoming conscious of Allah it saves you it it will it will affect every single aspect of your life it will affect the way that you if you are muslim properly it will affect the way you are with your mother your wife your father the way you are with people the way you speak the way you act the way you behave the way you dress every single the way you go to the toilet akramakumullah every single thing that you do islam affects that and similarly mm-hmm. islam has ideas about marriage and the way a man should be and if you're taking certain ideas and this is the fair some people may say well i'm just taking the good from red pill i'm just taking the stuff that we agree with yeah but if there's anything good in red pill if you as a muslim say i'm taking the good from red pill and you actually deep down believe that islam doesn't have this good that you're referring to that's actually a very dangerous statement because you're insinuating that okay islam is incomplete if someone believes that we be, as muslims believe the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with perfect goodness and if you if you if you're having to go to other places you're imperfect you you you're, you're insinuating imperfection so i actually you know i would like angel to comment on this you know because you're a river angel how is islam affected the aspects of your life you know how has it actually changed your life i mean it's changed it in every single way and in regards to what you're saying about like finding wisdom and insight in other places like listen i'll be the first one to say that i was all for that i was all for like look like why not just take take what works and then throw away the rest from the other stuff you yeah. know and then add it to your dean yeah. but it's like the more the more that i you know keep going on this path the more that i study islam and you know uh, certain words that I, i can't they're not coming to my head right now but the more that i learn about it the more that i see that like okay when i find something outside of islam that i find valuable it's already in islam it just means that i haven't i haven't gone deep enough into islam into my studies to have found it but it's there so any time that i see something that is of value i always kind of like put it on the side nowadays i just put it on the side like okay that that's really that's really nice now where can i find that in islam because i know it's in islam 
Because if I find it in Islam, well, then it's completely aligned with being a Muslim. If I only use it from so-and-so place, well, now I got to start taking what comes with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And the thing with a lot of people, and this is the thing, this is the case with a lot of uh, Muslims, unfortunately. Um, we, we, as a community, are very lacking in terms of education, even Islamic education. So who told you that you, you're even going to be able to discern the right from the wrong, the good from the bad? Mm. Your, 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 your experiences as a human being are limited. Your knowledge is limited, right? And as you go on in life, you're going to realize, oh, that thing I done was wrong. This was right, etc., and whatnot. So how, how are you able to discern? And this is the thing. This, this doesn't mean, you know, because there's extremism here. This doesn't mean that, you know, we're saying that there's no good, um, you know, in, 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 for example, if someone says something right, if someone says the truth, we accept the truth if it comes from someone. But that doesn't mean that we now follow and identify. There's another thing, you identify by an I ideology that is going to be inherently different to Islam. You know, so we have to be very, be very careful. There's yeah. The extremist point, bro, that you mentioned, there's too much too much of, a, of an extreme, too much of a dichotomy nowadays. It's like anyone that's part of the red pill, they're like, oh, if you don't agree, then you're blue pill. You know, if you're not alpha, you're beta. Like, bro, what does this even mean? Like, what? There's, there's too many of these 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 binaries, yeah. these false binaries yeah. that you, you add. And, and to an extent, when I was reading up on the red pill a few years ago, it's like it eventually leads to a point where there's no morality anymore. And we talked about this on the channel a lot before. Uh, it's it's almost promoting men to become higher value at the expense of women. And then you look at feminism, it's, it's to promote women's rights, but at the expense of men. So none of them are giving both of them inherent rights without putting and belittling down the other group. Mm. Yeah. No. And the, um, you, you know, subhanAllah, um, look at this here. Um, there is a hadith, it's narrated by Al-Bazzar on the authority of Jabir. He said, okay, listen to this. Umar radiallahu anhu, he copied part of the Torah in Arabic. Okay, because brothers and sisters, here's the point. We need to realize that, you know, these things are uh, different ideologies, different ways of looking at things. Fayyad, Angel, do you think that this is just happening in our time? This, there were different ideologies and ways of life at the time of the Prophet sallallahu At the very inception of Islam, Okay, at the very inception of the Sharia, when the Prophet ﷺ was alive, there were other ideologies. But look at this now. Omar radiallahu anhu, he copied part of the Torah in Arabic. Okay, this is the Torah. He brought it to the Prophet ﷺ and began to read it to him. As he read, the Prophet's face changed color. The Prophet's face changed color. Okay, one of the men of the Ansar, he said, Woe to you, Ibn al-Khattab. Can you not see the face of the Messenger of Allah? Thereupon the Prophet ﷺ said, Do not ask the people of the book about anything, for they will not guide you when they have gone astray. You will either disbelieve in what is right or believe in what is false. By Allah, if Moses had been alive today, he would have been obliged to follow me. Okay? Okay? Now, even though, okay, there is, um, you know, there is some sort of, uh, there is discussion on the um, authenticity of this hadith, etc. You know, one of the things that we need to realize, my dear brothers, yeah, is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he tell us to do? Did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instruct us to go, okay, guys, go to the, you know, this mentality that's come, oh, we're going to get the good from everywhere, etc. No, no, Islam is the good. Take Islam, you've got it in front of you. It's like if you've got diamonds in front of you, we can give so many examples, and I don't want to go on and on and, hmm. you know, keep saying the same thing. But if you've got diamonds in front of you, why on earth would you be going looking for copper and fishing out diamonds or trying to find other, you know, gems from copper? You have Islam. Islam is, is, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need this stuff. You actually don't need this stuff. Hmm. Subhanallah, bro. That's facts. Listen, I had one yeah. question for you. Before I ask that, let me just address the chat. So, Brother Asad writes, Masha'Allah.
than Rashid looking young. <laughs> Allah Mubarak, bro. Uh, we got Brother Maliki click writing. There are 73 people here. Think of it this way. You buy a $5 coffee daily. Why not support the Three Muslim channel? That's nothing on a monthly basis. Join up. So shout out to Brother Maliki. We had him. He's a, he's a revert who found Islam in prison. We had him on the show last week. May Allah bless him. Uh, let's see. Amen. We got 90 plus people and only 51 likes. Come on, guys. Get those likes up, inshallah. So, Brother Musa, my question to you is... A lot of the time when you address groups in society that might identify with, let's say, feminism or liberalism or the alpha gang, because yeah. you're in one extreme, because they're in one extreme, by definition, everything else seems like it's on the other extreme. And Anhal mentioned this point on a podcast, even if you're in the middle path, in the center, right, between all extremes, which is Islam, alhamdulillah, it still by default seems at another extreme because they're on one extreme. So when you say anything, Thing, even if it's with the most adab, with the most respect, with the most empathy, it still yeah. automatically shuts off a lot of people. So what's your solution to this? Because I see a lot of YouTubers nowadays, mashallah, may Allah preserve them and bless them, but yeah. they come at it in a way where it just gets the sisters to just shut off right away. Or it gets the people that are not on the straight path to just kind of abort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, subhanAllah. The way you approach things is very, very important. Your approach is very, very important. And, you know, um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was conscious of who he was speaking to and what the people would think about him, what the people would think about him. So the reality is we need to be conscious of, you know, um, how we're coming across to people. And I, I assume you're, you're talking about, you know, advising people, you know, whether it be about feminism and ridicule, right? Yeah, inshallah, just getting them to kind of leave any of these ideologies fully in terms of identifying and just coming to Islam. So here's the thing, man. Like, you can be very, very, like, upfront about it and stuff like that. But but the reality is your approach is very, very important. Because if you approach yourself in an extreme way or in a way that you feel like is going to be perceived as extreme, they're not going to listen to you. No, mm -hmm. None of us is going to listen. No one. No one is going to listen to anyone who's coming to them and coming across as extreme. You're not going to listen to that person. You're, you're simply not going to listen to that person. And here's the thing. As a dai, as someone who is calling to something, okay, the way you come across to the person who you're calling is of utmost importance. That, that is the thing. So, for example, if you're coming across rash and you're speaking to sisters about leaving feminism, for example, and you're coming mm. across really, really extreme, and you're saying abusive things, hurtful things, etc., they're not going to listen to you. You're just discrediting yourself. No one's going to listen to you. Yeah, and, and what you're doing is you're actually discrediting your cause because your cause is you're trying to bring people to Islam and you want people to leave other ideologies. But then w w while you're doing that, you also need to be conscious of those people's emotions. Okay? A lot of the time, you know, um, a sister may, for example, um, adopt the, ideolo the ideology of feminism because of experiences she's gone through in her life. She may come from a culture that is misogynistic. She may come from a culture that is misogynistic and she's interpreted Islam to be misogynistic because she thought her culture is Islam. So now when you're talking to her and you're speaking to her in an abusive way, you're basically proving her right. You're proving her right. And she's wrong because Islam is not like that. But when you're coming across as a Muslim brother, etc. in that way, it's completely wrong. And that's the thing. That's where you need to be conscious of the way you're coming across. Same thing, same thing with Red Pill. You know, we say to the brothers, you know, mashallah brothers, you know, you've got some, uh, you're onto something or whatever, etc. But instead of referencing, and he, this is the reality here, okay? You guys are going and you're referring to a fajir, fasiq, kafir for your guidance on Islam. Someone who the way Islam looks at him, this is a person who's rejected, you know, the revelation, etc. And the way Islam looks at this person, you're going to this person for advice on essentially how to live your life. But it doesn't make sense, mm. right? It actually doesn't make sense. So you need to make people realize that, but your approach is very, very important. You know, mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, 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 you know, Fir'aun, we, we read in the Quran about Pharaoh. He's one of the biggest criminals to walk the face of this earth. One of the biggest well, He said, Ana rabbukum al -a It's in the Quran in Surah Al-Nazi'at. Fir'aun, he claimed to be Allah. 
He said, I'm your Lord, the Most High. He's a human being saying this. But what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to Musa alayhi salam and Harun when he sent them to go and speak to Fir'aun? Very, very interesting. Regardless of this man being such a big criminal, being an oppressive man, an arrogant man, Allah said, وَقُولَا لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Subhanallah. And say to him words that are layin. Speak to him in a soft manner. Speak to him in a manner that is layin. Why? So that he can, you know, so that essentially he is able to take in what you're saying. So that he can... Mm. But, but now imagine Musa alayhi salam and Harun, they went to him and they aggressive. Uh, so so th- this is the point. Even, and this goes, by the way, this isn't just for red pill and feminism. This goes for anything in your life. You know, when you're speaking to your mother, your father, you're trying to advise your friend, you're trying to advise people. Have emotional intelligence. A lot of people, they lack serious emotional intelligence. They don't know, you know, how to come across as people. And this is problematic. So, yeah, man, that's what I'd say on that. I don't know what you guys think. Hmm. There's a lot to, a lot to unpack. I'm kind of like, my mind is like thinking about the whole stoicism thing. Because for a long time before I became Muslim, like I was real into the stoicism. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I read the meditations book. Yeah, 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 I read that. Well, some of it, I should say. I didn't read the entire thing. Yeah. Um, but man, like something that happened when I was like practicing stoicism was. Uh, Getting to the point where I was emotionless, you know, getting to the point where it's like I didn't feel sad, I didn't feel happy, I didn't feel angry. I was just stoked. I was like a machine, and while wow, like, that just made me feel empty. And there were times where I had to like sit and ask myself, like, damn, like, is this is this really it? Like. Yeah, like it helped me out in the beginning, but like the deeper I get into this, like the more I'm feeling like this, you know. Yeah. And uh, then when I came into Islam, uh, I started to see, okay, it's it's the middle path. You know, you're never overly emotional, but you're never overly unemotional. You, yeah. you, you're in that middle way, right? And um, I know this is like, this is taking a step back here in terms of the conversation because you had said one thing and I'm I'm bringing it to something else that we were already talking about. But I just want to say that because it's been on my mind for the past few minutes. Mm. Yeah, because the thing is, bro, like, this stuff changes lives, man. Like, that's what people don't realize as well. When you get into, like, a different ideology and you invest yourself in it, you read on it, you watch videos on it, it's going to affect you. Like, it's going to... Because you're watching it to take it in. You're consuming Mm. it, right? Mm. We become what we consume. Um, we become what we consume. So when you're consuming stoicism, at times, initially, you might feel very empowered. Like, yeah, man, this is the stuff. Like, the obstacle is the way. And my problems, you know, I know how to get through them now and etc. cetera, whatnot. But then you realize, because here's the thing, as a human being, we want to feel fulfilled as human beings. We want to feel, we want to feel the void that we feel in our hearts because we feel a void. And for as long as time goes, you know, and this shows you, like, you know, you can speak to these guys and you can watch them on YouTube. These guys who were partying, they were, you know, following every single carnal desire that they had. And they were going to extremes in those desires, how it destroys you. And then you see movements coming up that are encouraging people to stop masturbation. Don't watch porn. Don't do this. Don't do that. Yeah, but from a non-Muslim perspective, why shouldn't I do that? No, people should challenge it. Why shouldn't I do that? If, if me as a human being, I have desires and I want to do something and it's not illegal, why can't I do it for? Why can't I do that? Why can't I watch pornography? Why can't I, you know, be addicted to doing something? I'm not harming anyone, etc. But But this is the thing. This is the thing. And this is where when you make life subjective, you know, about what he thinks and what she thinks, etc. And we all have limited experiences. We don't know where we're going. But when you, and, and this is the value of Islam that we don't realize. When you value Islam, 
like Angel, you're talking about stoicism and etc. and how it made you feel at a certain time. Islam is a way of life that empowers you. There are certain things you're told that you can't do, but it gives you alternatives. There are certain things, you know, um, you know, you may feel a certain way, but just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean that you are, you know, that you know, subhanAllah, we even learn that in Islam, a person's not accountable for the thoughts that cross their mind unless they act upon them or unless they speak about them, etc. Right. So even thoughts that are crossing your mind, you know, you have a source, shaitan, these thoughts are from shaitan, etc. All of these things, you know, subhanAllah, they change a person's life. And that's why if you're going to choose something, you need to choose the right thing. You need to choose the right thing. Mm -hmm. It's deep. Yeah, it, it, it is, man. It comes back to the fact that Islam is perfect. You know, and... and Look at the main reason why people go into these other things. Yeah. Right. They they want they want guidance. They want role models. But yeah. what better place to get that than Islam when yeah. Islam is perfect? You have the perfect role models. You have the perfect guidance. You know, and it's like we're always looking. We're always looking for a role model. Let's be honest. Even as a kid, a kid is always looking for that role model that they can begin to emulate. Well, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but if I'm looking towards a role model, I look for the best possible role model there is, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if you actually look up on Google, the best man in the world in existence was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So why then would you choose another role model besides that? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is where if people just reflect on it and mm. they see it for what it is and it just, it all clicks. It all makes sense. And then the deeper into Islam you get, the more you start seeing, ah, okay, this thing that I was seeing here, it's in Islam. But Islam has even more than what this thing was telling me. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Uh, see the thing that brother Musa said about Islam being perfect and complete and suffice like sufficient you don't get that with another ideology because you might find glimpses of truth on like marriage or or how to have a fulfilling relationship with the kuffar in one ideology but it might not talk about finance it might not talk about you know what happens when you are giving your uh basically when you when you leave back money for your for the deceased you know Islam is a comprehensive way of life it doesn't leave any stone unturned anything that we needed to know right in terms of living a good life for this life and for the akhirah it's already in the quran and sunnah there's nothing else that we need so to the brothers that are you know and the sisters obviously that are caught in this fork in the road like should i implement some things from here some things from there it might oftentimes just be an emotional issue they might emotionally relate to something that was said in one ideology because of something in their upbringing just like brother musa said or something that they see in society being lacked or their idea of islam not having it when in islam in reality islam was perfect and they might just have to let it go yeah let me let me slide something in here too all right because People, they, they're getting this guidance, they're getting this wisdom, this insight, whatever it is. But you got to remember, like, what's, what's the main purpose here? Like, what's, mm -hmm. what's our main purpose as human beings? Like, it's very clear. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We have to focus on the ahira, not the dunya. Right? The dunya, is, this is temporary. We know this is temporary. So if you know that the main priority is to set ourselves up for the Akhira. Not for the dunya, for the Akhira. Well, then you have to now look at these things outside of Islam. They're not setting you up for the Akhira. They're setting you up for the dunya. Mm. They're setting you up to be good here, right now. But it's like, yeah, it might, like, like Brother Musa was saying, like, it might feel good right now. You might feel empowered right now. But you get to the point where it's like, you just get lost. You get lost in the sauce. You get lost in, in what it's giving you, which is dunya benefit. There's no akhira benefit there. Yeah. Mm. See, we have, a, we have a comment here. I want to get Brother Musa's thoughts on this. So, Brother Maliki writes, this is why men commit suicide on average five times more than women. To be an emotionless man has nothing to do with manhood. It's the reason weak men always go to aggression as they go to emotion. 
They believe it's masculine when it's actually a weakness holding back growth as a man. So what are your thoughts on that? And this is exactly why when we're discussing this, feminism, how does feminism see you as a woman? What, is, how, what does it think a woman should be like? Red pill, specifically red pill. Red pill, how does it value a man? What is seen as a high value man to red pill is not what Islam sees as a high value man. And this is where people need to realize that it's about which way of life you're choosing. Which way of life you're choosing. Deen. Which deen you're choosing. If you're choosing Islam as a deen, okay, as a way of life, then you need to look at the way. And who else, If you're, especially if you're a Muslim. If you're a Muslim, what does Muslim mean? A Muslim is the one who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam is submission. Submission to who? To whom? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So subhanAllah, Allah tells in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, udakhulu fi silmi kafa. O you who believe, enter into submission kafa. In, in, in complete submission. Enter into complete submission. Allah is telling you to completely submit yourself to Islam. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ And don't follow the footsteps of shaytan. إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُّبِينٌ Indeed, he is to you a clear enemy. My dear brothers and sisters, if you speak to some of the people of knowledge about the, some of the biggest threats to Muslims today, they won't mention to you atheism. They won't mention to you, you know, other religions. Etc. They'll mention to you ideologies. Mm. Ideologies. Because you see these ideologies to Muslims, um, the Muslim, he won't become an atheist because he knows he can't be a Muslim and an atheist. He won't become a Christian, but here's where Muslims fool themselves. They think, I can be someone who identifies by red pill and be a Muslim. I can be someone who's a feminist, Muslimah, right? And they don't understand that actually there's something called shirk al ta'a. There's shirk. We all know what shirk is. Shirk is associating partners with Allah. But you can associate partners with Allah in different angles. In rububiyah, in his lordship. Okay? You can associate partners with Allah in worship. Okay? Of course. But there's also shirk al ta'a. Associating partners with Allah in whom you obey. So we as Muslims are to obey Allah. Obey Allah. But you, you're obeying an ideology. An ideology is telling you this is right. This is right. D don't marry divorced women. Do this, da, 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 da. and you, you're like, you know what? That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna follow that. And you don't realize, but you may even, even at times, be falling into shirk. So the point is about what the brother is saying. You know, um, what does Islam consider as a man? What's a man to Islam? Naudu billah. Some of these guys, if you were to describe the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to them, what do you think they're gonna say about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Some of these same non-Muslim red pillars right these guys who identify by red pill if you were to say there's a man he lived in seventh century arabia um you know he was not the most wealthiest of men he lived a very very simple life you know sometimes you know um there was there was no fire in the house etc um you know and he was doing this and he was doing that, and he would spend a lot of time ex this is not what they class as a high value man my brothers and sisters all right to them this stuff is uh it's like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to say anything. Mm. But you know what I'm saying? So it shows you Islam sees a high value man, men of value in a different way. You know, Musa alayhi salam, you know, you can see like the fear, if you want to say, or like the um, the humanness of Musa alayhi salam, mm. right? Mm. That when he's, when, he, when he's being told to go to Fir'aun, قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي قَتَلْتُ مِنْهُمْ نَفْسِ Like, or, 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 or the, whatever the ayah mentions, I don't want to misquote the ayah, but it, how he mentions that, you know, you know, yeah, قَالَ إن رَبِّ إِنِّي قَتَلْتُ مِنْهُمْ نَفْسًا فَأَخَافُ أَنْ يَقَتُلُونَ That, oh my Lord, I killed from amongst them a person, okay, because he accidentally killed someone, okay. I killed from amongst them a person. So, فَأَخَافُ, the word is actually used, أَخَافُ, I'm scared that they're going to kill me. He's a man. He's a man. Musa alayhi salam is a man. Umar radiallahu anhu. People who say about him, he's known for his manhood and what they think is manhood. Yeah. It's... Mm. But Umar radiallahu anhu, he was also known, you know, to for the marks on his face. 
because of how much he used to cry, he used to weep. A man is someone who stands before Allah. He cries. He hears the Quran. He cries. رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله من you know تجارة right you know business بيع selling etc these things do not divert them from the remembrance of Allah hmm. and then you have red pill saying no 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 listen mate you need to do business you need to get into this you need to you need to up your and that's not we're not saying we're against business we're not saying we're against making money but we're saying the way these two ideologies, because Islam, if you want to quote, Islam is a way of life, it's a deen. The way these two deens look at a man is different. Mm. Islam looks at a man a certain way, and whether you like it or not, this is fact. Islam looks at a man a certain way, red pill looks at a man a certain way. Which one do you want to, which, which, which definition do you want to follow? It's up to you. Some definition made by a group of, uh, uh, yeah, a group of guys who, who they, they themselves are prone to mistakes, or Something that we know is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. SubhanAllah, bro. That I, I love that point, bro. We're gonna make a clear about that too, because it was it was such a valuable point. But you you look at Islam too. What defines you as a high value man in the eyes of Allah? It's actually yeah. not that difficult, bro. I didn't say it's it's easy, but it's simple, right? And you can become that, you can become in a very short amount of time. But when you look at red pill, right, all the things it says to become a, a good man, it's it's and inaccessible role to a lot of people like you must have a lot of wealth you must be this you must be that like yeah, yeah. like you jump through all these hoops bro just to please an ideology not even the creator but when you look at islam allah's already telling us what to do we already have the blueprint out for us bro and it's not that difficult bro so subhanallah brother hamza writes uh let's see there's a reason why allah included the stories of the prophets in the quran so they can be a role models that's true um feminism and red pill are fundamentally motivated by greed it's entitlement disguised as equality Hmm. And then Brother Maliki writes, the standard of manhood is the Prophet, and he wasn't, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he wasn't red-pilled. The standard of what a woman is is Khadija, radiallahu anha, and she wasn't a feminist. That's facts. Yeah, hmm. yeah. And red pill is, is a response to the extremism of feminism, right? Um, it's a response to the extremism of feminism. So, hmm. like, look, all, all we need to realize is, just like in a marriage, if in a marriage, if you go into a marriage, and... And, and look at how this is making society, subhanAllah. Look at this. Now, now brothers and sisters, uh, bro, bro, brothers, yeah, I want to ask you a question. Um, the guys from Red Pill, they, they believe Red Pill is best for men, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, feminists, they believe feminism is best for women, right? Mm. Okay. So let's, let, let's, let's put this scenario into actuality. All men become Red Pillars and all women become feminists. What's going what's to happen? There's a divide. The family unit is gone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you know what I'm saying now? So, you know what I just realized, bro, as soon as you said that? Most yeah. of the men I've seen that are red pilled, they're yeah. with women that are not feminists. And most of the women I know that are feminists, their man is not red pilled. Yeah. So yeah. When you asked what would happen if men resorted to their own extreme and women resorted to theirs respectively. Yeah. Anna's right, bro. There would be a divide. There would be no congruency within the man and woman dynamic, no family stability whatsoever. Because no kid would have a, a single you know, or two parent household. It's ridiculous, bro. Both of these ideologies, and pay attention here, brothers and sisters, both of these ideologies are relying upon the opposite sex to not follow the opposite ideology. They are both relying on the opposite sex. So, for example, men who are red pill, they are relying upon the opposite sex not to be feminists. Because if they were feminists, it wouldn't work. And feminists are relying, relying upon men to not be red pill. So, brothers and sisters, now let's put the Islamic... Let's put... And this is how you know... By the way, there's many reasons why Islam is from Allah. And, and by the way, one of the things that we go back to here, actually, is you as a Muslim, work on your yaqeen. Seek more knowledge... And increase yourself in certainty that Islam is from Allah. That is the truth. Because when you do that as well, you're going to be even more happy. If you are certain about Islam, you're going to be like, listen, I believe in everything that Islam says. I don't even need to know everything. Because I know it's from Allah. But check this out now. Let's put Islam into actuality now. We put red pill and feminism into actuality. Islam. The way Islam encourages a lady to be. And the way Islam encourages a man to be. It creates a perfect 
harmonious marriage, a relationship, okay, that it that it it connects like this. It fits together and it facilitates for a healthy society, a society without uh, men abusing women and women mm. abusing men, a society that is harmonious and futuristic. Okay? This is what Islam promotes. If a Muslim was to actually follow Islam in her actions and a Muslim man was to follow Islam in his actions in the way he has to be as a man, you will see harmony in society. You will see harmony in society. And that's that's when we realize, when we actually make these ideologies practical, we see they don't work. They actually don't work. They don't um, take society forward. They take society backwards. Mm, it's true. It's true. Very selfish ideologies, very selfish, based on the fact that you as a man, you have desires, uh, based on a, on the fact that you as a woman, you don't like the way um, certain uh, you know certain things have happened, etc. Very, very very selfish ideologies, you know, based on the self. You know, it's crazy too. Is that when someone follows one of these ideologies, and let's say they they hit the pinnacle, like they reach the top of the top of like <laughs> what this ideology is uh, portraying. Yeah. The empty. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like you got you got the reptile and you say, Oh, you gotta have the status, you gotta have the looks, you gotta have the money, you gotta have the women, you gotta have the women in rotation. You can't just have one woman and you then multiple. You can't be married. And then once you have it all, it's like uh it's bro, it's like this um I forgot who said it. It was one of please if, if one of y'all know, like chime in, but I think it was like a shake or something who was holding up like a, a dead piece of goat. And then he was like, oh, you want this? Like, you want this? And then it was like, no, no, like, I don't want that. I don't want that. He's like, this is the dunya. This is everything in the dunya. It, it's the equivalent of this dead piece of goat. I think it was and a it, it's, of so some yeah. that, that the, the dunya in the eyes of Allah is less valuable than this dead goat is to you. This dead goat carcass is to you. Yeah. And that's that's what it is. That's what it is. It's like red pill. All these, all these ideologies are like holding up this this dead piece of gold that at first to you, it looks like, it looks like gold. It looks like it's like, oh, this is it. But then like the more you get into it and then when you finally get it in your hand and then you, you hold it up, you're like, oh damn, like this, this ain't gold. Hmm. This a dead piece of gold. The hell did I just do? I just wasted X amount of years and I got this dead piece of gold in my hand. This isn't going to do anything for me. This isn't making me happy. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And yeah, man, when there's fundamental differences like that, and there are fundamental differences between Islam and these ideologies, you know, and, th and this is, guys, this is why it's so dangerous for the youth. It's so dangerous because these things by some Muslim brothers and sisters aren't even seen as threatening. Mm -hmm. They aren't seen as dangerous. You know when your enemy's in front of you and he's an enemy? Khalas, you know he's an enemy. But when your friend is an enemy and he's got a knife to your back, but you don't even know it, someone you perceive as a friend, someone you perceive, something you perceive as so good for you, right? And you're consuming it daily. You're like, yeah, this is good. You know, and whatever. You're watching these guys and you're like, yeah, this is how I need to be as a man, you know, or whatever. And it's exactly what Ankel said, because brothers and sisters, in, in reality, a lot of a lot of the guys who are probably getting into this is because they feel a void. A lot of the sisters who get into you know feminism, you know, it's probably because they feel a void, right? But we need to realize that the void, you know, you know, Allah bi dhikrillahi qulub. It is by the remembrance of Allah, hearts find rest. It's not about money. It's not about um, you know how many women you have. It's not about all of these things. It's about your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If your relationship with Allah is good, everything will be good. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us that, that in the human being's body, there is a mudra, there is a piece of flesh. إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ 
if that piece of flesh is pure, if it's good, all of that human being is going to be pure. إِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ He said, if it's messed up, that, that piece of flesh, if it's messed up, the whole body is going to be mashed up. أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ It is the heart, the human heart. It is the heart. And I'm sorry, these people who you're looking up to, their hearts are not in the right places. May Allah guide them, but their hearts are not in the right places. So, you know, mm. you're chasing the thing. It's not, it's not where it's at, man. It's not where it's at. Tell me, the, happy, bro. the happiest people I know personally are those who are the closest to Allah. They're the happiest people. That's facts. And I know, bro, me and you, we can speak from experience, bro. The deeper we go on this journey, the more fulfilled we feel with life. 100%, right? Yeah. And, you know, there's a saying, you know, why do you think in Ramadan you feel so good? It's because of all of the months in the year, this is the one month that you're actually living for your purpose. You know, Ramadan, why do you feel so good? Why why is there even people on Twitter, Instagram, they're all talking about Ramadan. Like, oh, Ramadan. You guys, you don't realize. The reason why you feel like that in Ramadan is because finally you're actually doing what your purpose is. You're actually doing what your purpose is. Your heart is actually in the right place. Your heart is actually cured. You know, subhanAllah. And uh, this is the thing, man. It's like, guys, you know, if, if you put, you know, if you're putting diesel in an unleaded car, in a petrol car, you're going to mash that car up. You're putting things in the wrong place. You need to put petrol in that car. Your heart, you're trying to fix your heart with women with money, with, you know, temporary uh, desires, temporary pleasure, you're going to mash yourself up even worse. Mm. Angel, you know, I know, you you know, a lot of the videos you used to make are on, you know, people stopping pornography. Even when you were a non-Muslim, the videos you would make on people stopping pornography and, you know, stopping that stuff and whatnot. And even, even as a non-Muslim, you know, you, you I'm sure you realize that it's not about these temporary... When you're engaging in these temporary pleasures, you're actually delaying um, your happiness and you're actually making your happiness worse because you're temporarily getting better. But in terms of long term, you're actually getting worse. Mm. You are. You definitely are. Man, and what you said about Ramadan is so true. Yeah. Where, like We experience the sweetness of actually being a Muslim. You know, the rest of the year... We could, we perhaps we might experience it. For the most part, we're kind of caught up in the dunya in, in every everyday life. But when Ramadan hits, it's like, nah, there's there's no distraction. Like, this is your true purpose. And if you if you, you know, hit everything on point, you're actually making time for Allah during Ramadan. You experience that sweetness. You experience the sweetness from the ibadah, from the worship. And I think this is why it's so important for us as Muslims to fast outside of Ramadan. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like, personally, I started fasting uh, Mondays and Thursdays because of this brother. You know, may Allah bless him because he's the one that, like, brought this on. Uh, but it was more so just to control sexual urges. But the more that I, I fast outside of Ramadan, the more I'm seeing, like, wow it's a reset not only is it a reset for like my health and all that but in terms of spirituality like throughout the week i feel like i'm slowly just like inching away from a lot like just getting distracted with all these things and then like once mondays and thursdays come like man it's it's a whole nother world like the prayers are just completely different like fully fully into the prayer my mind's not even like distracted or anything like that. The time after the prayers is just so reflective, and it's like it, it's like that sweetness comes back. And like, man, if if every single Muslim were to be fasting Mondays and Thursdays, I don't know. I, I really don't, Allah knows best, but I I feel like that would keep that sweetness alive. You know, keep keep the taqwa alive and and keep Muslims more more Muslim. For lack of better words. You, you know, this stuff is life-changing, bro. And 
you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wanted guidance for us as his ummah. He wanted guidance for us. He wanted Islam for us. Allah in the Quran, in the beginning of Surah Al-Shu'ara, the Surah is called, the translation of it is called The Poets. Surah Al-Shu'ara. Um, it starts, Taseem Meem, Tilka Ayatul Kitab al Mubin, the third verse of the Surah. لَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعٌ نَفْسَكَ أَنْ لَا يَكُونُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ Perhaps you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you will destroy yourself out of grief that these people are not becoming believers. Perhaps you will destroy yourself. You, 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 you will destroy yourself out of grief that these people, they are not becoming believers. You know, subhanAllah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he cared about his people becoming Muslims so much, becoming believers so much. Why? Because he knows what this life is about. He knows what the Akhirah is about. He knows what it's about. So when you're distracting yourself with all of this other stuff, this is not mm. what life is about. You know, whenever you go to people's funerals, the people, they always mention, so-and-so, he built this masjid. So-and-so, he was a very charitable man. So-and-so used to pray a lot. So-and-so memorized the Quran. So-and-so. And you know, it's a commonality within all of these things. They only mention things to do with the religion and things to do with sadaqah and stuff. Like that. They, that these are like the only things that are mentioned. Because even the people who are still in this dunya who had that funeral, even they realize, yeah, no one cares that he was a millionaire now. No one cares about how, how many women he had. No one cares about how high value of a man he was in society no one gives a damn now he's being referred to as the body where should we move the body when should we bury the body we're not even calling him by his name now and the only thing that they will care to mention is oh yeah 15 years ago he uh, built a masjid for the village in this country they, they're trying to find something good to mention about him because brothers and sisters the reality is this life is not it. One guarantee we all have is we're gonna die. And an existential you know question that has haunted many people for years is yo, what the heck is gonna happen to me after I've gone? What it I'm gonna die, what happens after death? Philosophers are talking about it. Everyone is talking about it. We as Muslims, we know, subhanAllah. We know, you know. Allah says, Falawla ida balagatil hulkum. Allah speaks about how when the throat, when the soul, it reaches this, this area. And you all, you can see. Right? And we are closer to him than you, but you can't see. But you can't see. Allah is essentially saying, if you basically think this stuff is fake, right? Essentially, right? You think, تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ That soul that's yeah. just gone, bring it back. Stop it, yeah, stop it. Bring, bring it back. That soul you've just seen, bring it back. You're not going to be able to bring it back. And this is, these are signs in front of us. What's going on around us, guys? People are losing their lives. And subhanAllah, there's a story from the Israeliyat. Okay, so the authenticity of it is questionable, etc. Maybe questionable, but we can learn a lesson from it. A man, he spoke to the angel of death. And he said to the angel of death, essentially, and of course, I paraphrased the whole thing. I see what you're doing with people. I see what you're doing with people. You're just taking these people's souls, right? With me, I want to have an agreement with you. When you take my soul, I want you to let me know before you do. Okay? So the angel of death agrees with him. Okay? So he's living his life. He goes on, etc. And then the angel of death later on in his life comes to take his life. And he said, we had an agreement. Angel of death says, I, I let you know. How did you let me know? You know so-and-so uncle that you have? He passed away last year. I took his soul. So-and-so grandfather that you have? I took his soul. Around you, all of the people around you, I took their souls one by one. And now it's you left. Mm. Now it's you left. These, these are signs for us. So, why we become so emotional when we hear about death, 
and we hear about these topics, etc., and we become serious and it affects us, it's because, wallahi, we know this is the reality. We, we know this is the reality. We're going to go. We're going to go. And guys, no one cares. Kevin Samuels, okay, and I'm not mentioning it to disrespect anyone, but he passed away, I don't know, like a week ago? A week ago. Mm. A week exactly from now. A week, literally last Friday, he passed away. As soon as he passes away, people are saying bad things about him, etc. Now, who's talking about him? Not many. Not many. And in a year, who's going to remember this person? And I'm mentioning this as a sign, as a thing. Guys, it's not about, life is not about this. This is what, not, not, not what life is about. Life is about, you know, that day, wealth, these things that we value, wealth and banoon, children, that day, nah, it's not going to benefit you. The only thing that's going to benefit you on that day is this heart that you came with. As long as it was a good heart. If it was a good heart, that's going to benefit you. If you mashed up your heart, if you've done the wrong things, if you were addicted to pornography, if you were, you know, doing haram, if you were going against, you know, you were wronging yourself. And even non-Muslims, when they do these sins, when they drink alcohol, they take drugs, they watch pornography, they sleep around and commit zina, they feel an emptiness. This emptiness they are feeling, it is alarm bells. They, they are letting themselves know, I'm not, they themselves, they don't know about the revelation maybe, about Islam, etc. But their body, they, they themselves, their nafs is letting them know, you got, yo, listen man, the way you're living your life, this is not it. This is not it. This, this, is, this is not it. Why are you feeling like that? And technically, you shouldn't be feeling like that. Logically. Why are you feeling like that? You're fulfilling your desires. Why should you be feeling like that? Mm -hmm. Logically. Lo but it doesn't work like this. There's logics. There are logics that these people don't have. And that is the logic of Islam. The way Allah looks at things. The way Allah looks at things. Subhanallah. These, these non-Muslims, they come and they say, uh, you know, your relative, he uh, he's going to pass away in six months. You know, maybe we should take him off life support machine. Maybe we should do this. Maybe we should do that. They don't look at things the way that we do. That when we go through problems, we see it as the hadith mentions, had to show you Even if a thorn pricks a Muslim, his sins are expiated from that. Non-Muslims don't look at it like that. They look at these things as problems. The hadith tells us, "Man yurid Allahu bihi khaira yusib minhu." Whoever Allah wants good for, whoever Allah wants good for, the Prophet said said this: Allah afflicts that person with trials. If Allah wants good for you, He's going to test you. You're going to be tested. حسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا وهم لا يفتنون. Do the people think? Do the people perceive that they're going to be left alone? You know, uh, and to say we believe, I believe, and they're not. Well, they're not going to be tested. They're not going to be tested. No, it's not like that. You're going to be tested. This life is a test. And girl, you rightly mentioned earlier, this life, our purpose of life is is to worship Allah. Okay, but also this life is a test. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. He created death and life ليبلوكم. To, you, 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 so, so brothers and sisters we know all of these things and uh, this is a reminder to myself first man wasn't it he created uh, life and death to see which of us was best in um, actions yeah you know, yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. subhanallah bro uh, we we had our own relationships, bro, in the title, but I don't think we got time for that today. Inshallah, next time. Yeah, there's there's a lot to unpack from here, but you know, there's two more uh, su uh thing member chats that I want to address. So, brother Oasis writes: Yesterday, I wasn't feeling well. I almost felt like death was coming. Wallahi, when you realize the truth that death is just coming more and more closer, you don't think about this dunya anymore. So, bro, 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 there's this. Else. I mean, there's this one thing I read in this book by Imam Al Ghazali. 
and he was mentioning that this guy he, he was saying this on um, like story and he said that uh this life is like a dream and death is like this curtain that's unveiled so once you die it's like you wake up and then this like curtain is lifted up and now it's like now you're in reality so it's like it's basically just you know saying the same thing i just I thought it was very mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. fitting to throw in there Allah Akbar, bro. Hamza5106 writes, everyone pressures the dunya on you when you're alive, yet only judge you on your akhirah when you're dead. Yeah. 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 This, bro, this is why it's so important to put Allah first Yeah. and stay on deen. Do what you gotta do to stay on deen. Like, be a proper Muslim. And in order to be a proper Muslim, you have to follow the correct belief system. The, you have to have the correct Akida. And then you also have to put your ego aside. Like, how, how can you be a Muslim if you have an ego? You know, like, yeah, I'm not saying like, oh, I don't have an ego. I have an ego. I'm not going to lie to you. But when your ego is in control, like, yeah, you're not submitting. You're really not submitting. You're, you're acting out of arrogance. And, and you're humbled. You know, at, at some point or another, Allah will humble you and, and you will learn from it. it it's like you... You'll snap out of it. But like when you are in this humble state, when you put your ego aside, you feel the sweetness of Islam, bro. You feel the sweetness of the bother that you do. And it, it all just connects. It all makes sense. That's something I was trying to get at, but I completely forgot, y'all. You know, on that point, Angelia, there's a hadith that. where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man ta'adhama fi nafsihi wa khtala fi mashyatihi laqiya Allah wa huwa alayhi ghudban. Powerful. That... The Prophet told us, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that whoever he gives greatness to himself, he thinks that he himself is great. And when he walks on the earth, when he walks, he walks in a prideful manner. That person is going to meet Allah on the day of judgment, and Allah will be angry with that person. So, so it shows you like all of this thing where you're being promoted to be this arrogant, haughty uh, person who walks on the earth like you've made it, etc. This is not what it's about. It's a, and 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 we look at the opposite. The Prophet ﷺ, he expressed to us, "Man tawada alillahi rafaahu Allah." Oh, kama qal ali salatu wasalam that whoever humbles himself before Allah subhanahu wa taala, he humbles him, he humbles himself for Allah. The Hadith mentions it, "Lillah for Allah." He's not humbling himself for the people. He's humbling himself for Allah. He's being humble for Allah. Allah will raise that person. That person, mm-hmm. Allah will raise him. You're going to see him being raised. So, this is, this is what it is, guys. Choices need to be made. And instead of focusing and watching and focusing on trying to, you know, become this and become that, you know, believe me, the person who makes the Akhirah their number one objective, their number one priority to fix their Akhirah, Allah will look after that person. Mm. You take care of the rulings related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala As the hadith mentions You basically, you know, preserve Allah Preserve the rights of Allah Allah will preserve you Simple 100%, 100%. Sheikh Ali Hamuda bro from, from the UK He said in one of the khutbas He said that, you know, when human beings Were faced with two choices One, to please Allah And kind of get disapproval of the dunya Kind of get that FOMO feeling Or to pro- to, to, to be validated and, and, you know, do things that are going to get approval from other people But you get disapproval from Allah Too many times, bro Too often times People will pick the, the bad option bro the one where you you seek the validation of other people at the expense of of Allah bro and that's the thing like peer pressure is a real thing bro today nobody wants to feel left out bro there's a hadith where the prophet also mentioned that Islam began as something strange and indeed will return to something strange so glad tiding to the strangers and today we need to realize and this is a message to myself first and foremost that even though no one's with you bro if you were the last Muslim alive today would you really be Muslim ask yourself that question bro and inshallah, Allah can and can you know guide us to a point where we can undoubtedly, bro, with with, with a, without a shadow of a doubt, bro, say yes. Because too many people they'll 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 walk they'll talk the talk, bro. But when it's time to walk the walk, they won't do it, bro. When no one else is praying, they don't want to pray because they're like, oh, I don't want to act awkward and I don't want to go pray and they're gonna think I'm like you know I'm like a sheikh or something, bro. At the end of the day, huck is huck, bro. There's no denying it. 
hundred percent, man, hundred percent. How did that? And imagine, imagine, Im- Allah is watching you. Allah is watching you saying, "I don't want to be religious." <laughs> Allah is watching you saying that. Allah is, you know, Allah can mm. see you, you know. And this is the reality, man. And you know, and and you know what? We were spoke to speak speak about haram relationships and all of this other stuff. But the reality is, guys, you know, if if the people are clever, and I'm sure they are. And they understand from our words when we're talking about the akhirah and becoming a better person, etc. They will understand. They, they, if you understand this, you understand everything. You understand everything. Hmm. Well, this, I, I need to get going. It is time for a juma. Yeah, bro. We got a juma as well, bro. I was going to say, let's just wrap it up. No. So you guys are like seven hours behind or something. What time is it? Five, five hours. Five hours from the UK. Okay. Okay, it's okay. uh it's one nineteen and I got like fifteen minutes to get dressed, make wudu and head over to the masjid. Inshallah. Khalas. Inshallah, bro. Inshallah. May Allah bless us, bro. And may Allah bless you, brother Musa, for oh, yeah. spitting gems one like- more time. Inshallah, next time we can talk about all the other stuff that we wanted to talk about. Um and until then, bro, I'll just keep you in my duas and uh do you have any closing remarks, bro, before we wrap it up? Now that's it. May Allah bless you all. Please keep us in your duas and forgive us for any mistakes as well. I mean, I mean, I mean. All right, guys. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam.